Do you need a reminder of Toby, Andrew and Tom Holland's Spider-Man journeys? Stay right here! Peter Parker, a lovable nerdy high school senior, goes on a school trip to an advanced genetic engineering lab, being bitten by a genetically modified spider that has escaped. He wakes up the next day feeling great. Over the course of the day, finding out he no longer needs his glasses, has abs, not to mention his super strength, reflexes, spider sense, wall crawling ability, and webbing he can shoot from his wrists. Peter lives with his Aunt May and Uncle Ben, wanting to earn some money to buy a car and impress the girl next door, Mary Jane Watson, Peter enters a wrestling tournament, keeping this secret from his uncle who offers to take him when he says he's going out. Before Peter goes, Ben offers some great advice. With great power comes great responsibility. Unfortunately, despite winning his wrestling match, the promoter cheats him out of his winnings, causing Peter to allow a thief who stole the promoter's money to get away. Needing a getaway vehicle quickly, the thief steals Uncle Ben's car, shooting him. Peter finds his uncle on the street, being there as he passes away. He chases the carjacker down, finding out it was the thief, but before he can do anything, he trips and falls out of a window. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at BigScreenMovies for my initial thoughts and reviews of the latest movies and TV shows. If you want more in-depth thoughts as well as sneak previews for my latest videos, follow me on TikTok. The link is in the description. Using this as motivation to do good, he becomes Spider-Man, using his powers to fight crime. Meanwhile, Peter's best friend, Harry Osborn, starts dating Mary Jane, whilst his father, Norman Osborn, who's something of a scientist himself, is making a performance-enhancing serum, hoping for a military contract. However, Oscorp's funding is under threat, as they must get to human trials soon. Under pressure to perform, Norman tests the serum out on himself. It works, but he goes a little crazy, donning his company's latest military tech and becoming the Green Goblin. With Peter now graduated, he needs some money and so gets a job at the Daily Bugle, selling pictures of Spider-Man to J. Jonah Jameson, in which he uses to discredit the hero, believing him to be a menace. The Goblin goes after those that threatened his company and try to sell it, facing Spider-Man a few times, offering him a place by his side, but upon refusing it, is attacked by the crazed Goblin. When sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner, Norman realises that Peter is the vigilante, going after those that he cares for. Peter manages to save a kidnapped MJ, along with some kids, taking on Goblin for one final fight. Peter is brutally beaten until enraged gains the upper hand and comes to find the true identity of the Green Goblin. Norman tries to trick him, but ends up impaling himself. His final words to Peter asking him not to tell his son. Pete delivers the body to the Osborne residence, where he is seen by Harry, who believes it was Spider-Man that killed his father. At the funeral, MJ tells Peter she is in love with him, but is shut down as Peter knows the ones closest to him are only going to get hurt. Peter Parker has been Spider-Man for some time now, but is struggling to balance his job, his education, his family, and love life, finding his powers beginning to fail him from time to time. On top of this, Aunt May is facing eviction, and his best friend is still out for Spider-Man. With his father's death, Harry is now head of Oscorp's genetic and scientific research division, funding a fusion power project for nuclear scientist Dr. Otto Octavius. Wanting to write a paper on him, Peter is invited to meet him, befriending the scientist, with him even offering some advice with his love life. Has anybody lost a large roll of $20 bills in a rubber band? because we found the rubber band. In order to safely handle dangerous and hazardous materials involved in his project, Octavius binds with four robotic tentacle arms, AI, but controlled by himself, thanks to the inhibitor chip. During a public demonstration, a power spike causes the fusion reactor to destabilize, going critical, causing his wife's death, the inhibitor chip to fry, and for Peter to swing in and shut the machine down. Doctors prepare to remove the tentacles from Octavius, however with the inhibitor chip destroyed, the AI defend themselves, killing all the staff and escaping, taking refuge at a nearby harbour. With the AI greatly influencing the doctor's decision making skills, he decides to rob a bank to fund a second attempt at his fusion power experiment. Peter and Aunt May are at the bank, with May being taken as a hostage as Peter appears as the wall crawler. 
he saves his aunt, with her suspicions about his identity possibly raised, and the newly named Doc Ock escapes with the money. Mary Jane has moved on from Peter it seems, becoming engaged to John Jameson, son to the Bugle editor J. Jonah Jameson. With everything falling apart, Peter loses his power. Deciding he needs to be Peter Parker, not Spider-Man, he throws his suit away. Unsuccessfully reconciling with MJ and admitting to his aunt how he was responsible for Uncle Ben's murder. She quickly forgives him, telling him how much the city needs Spider-Man at the moment, with the crime rate increasing. Meanwhile, needing tritium to fuel his reactor, Octavius makes a deal with Harry Osborn, agreeing to bring him Spider-Man in exchange for the isotope. Otto locates Peter, kidnapping MJ and telling him to find Spider-Man. With his powers suddenly back, Peter steals his suit back and confronts the Doctor. Battling it out, they fall onto the city subway train, with Octavius damaging the controls, forcing Peter to save the passengers with great physical exhaustion, causing him to faint. The passengers prevent him from falling and vow to keep his secret, seeing his unmasked face. Octavius returns, capturing Peter and delivering him to Harry, collecting his tritium. Preparing to kill his father's killer, Harry unmasks Peter, stumbling back in disbelief. Peter leaves, needing to stop Octavius before he blows up the whole city. They fight as the nuclear reaction swells. Peter convinces the Doctor to let his dream go. In control of the arms for the first time since the first experiment, Octavius drowns his project in the river, sacrificing himself as Peter saves Mary Jane, revealing his identity to her also. Meanwhile, Harry is haunted by the memory of his father, ordering him to avenge his death as his son finds a secret room filled with goblin equipment. On her wedding day, MJ leaves John at the altar, telling Peter that she accepts the risks that come with him being Spider-Man. Stargazing in Central Park, Peter and MJ are unaware of a meteorite that lands nearby. From it, an alien symbiote crawls out attaching itself to Peter's bike. Harry Osborn, using his father's performance enhancing gas and goblin tech, attacks Peter on his way home. Pete manages to gain the upper hand, causing Harry to hit his head hard, resulting in amnesia. Flint Marco, who escapes prison, is on the run, visiting his wife and sick daughter. With the police on his tail, he falls into an experimental particle accelerator, which fuses his body with the sand around him, turning into the Sandman. Peter is informed that the real killer of his uncle was this man, Flint Marco. The initial thief was an accomplice, waiting for Marco to come out of hiding so he can take him down. Peter falls asleep, with a symbiote binding with the spider suit. Peter wakes up atop of a building, his suit now black, feeling stronger, faster, and more agile. However, the suit also brings out Pete's darker side, tracking down his uncle's killer to enact revenge. He finds Marco in a subway tunnel, finding out water is his weakness. He bursts a pipe, turning him to mud. Meanwhile, Mary Jane's career isn't going well after some poor reviews, and Peter, under the influence of this new suit, as well as his own egocentrism as Spider-Man, is only pushing her away. With his mind beginning to heal, Harry begins to hallucinate about his father again, forcing Mary Jane to break up with Peter, wanting to hurt him as much as possible. Wearing the symbiote suit, Peter later confronts Harry, telling him his father never loved him, belittling his friend. They fight with Peter deflecting a pumpkin bomb back at Harry, disfiguring his face. Eddie Brock, who has been trying to steal Peter's job at the Bugle, is revealed to have faked his pictures, with Peter being promoted to star photographer. Wanting to make MJ jealous, Peter takes Eddie's ex, Gwen Stacy, to the jazz club she now works at. After accidentally hitting Mary Jane, Peter realises what the symbiote is doing to him, going to a church's bell tower, ripping the suit off, as the bell's clanging weakens it. Down below, hearing the struggle, Eddie looks up as the symbiote falls on him, becoming its new host, becoming Venom. Brock tracks down a still-living Flint Marco, teaming up to kill Spider-Man. They kidnap MJ, luring Pete in. Harry's butler finally reveals it was the blaze from his own glider that had killed his father. Not able to take them both, Peter is losing hope until his friend arrives with full goblin tech to help save MJ. Brock attempts to impale a tied up Peter, but Harry jumps in, saving his friend and being thrown aside. Remembering the bell tower, Peter assembles a perimeter of metal pipes to create a sonic attack weakening it. He activates a pumpkin bomb to destroy the creature. 
but Eddie jumps back in just as it goes off, vaporising them both. Marco approaches Peter, explaining what really happened the night of Ben's death. Peter forgives Marco, allowing him to escape before checking in on Harry, reconciling before he dies from his injuries. After Harry's funeral, Peter visits Mary Jane at the jazz club, starting over and sharing a dance. If this video isn't your cup of tea, check out the complete timeline and recap of Hawkeye's journey in the MCU, or perhaps John Kreese's complete Karate Kid and Cobra Kai timeline. If they don't interest you, check out who is Monica Rambo and what are her powers. Playing hide and seek, a young Peter Parker walks into his father's office only to find they've been burgled. He calls for his father, who immediately packs away secret documents, takes his son to his aunt and uncles, and leaves with his wife, never coming back. Now 18, Peter attends Midtown Science High School. With the basement flooded at home, he retrieves his father's old work bag, finding a hidden compartment with documents inside, learning that his father worked with Dr. Curtis Connors at Oscorp in the field of cross-species genetics. Sneaking in, Peter enters a lab whereby a genetically modified spider bites him, being sent home by Gwen Stacy, student at Midtown, and intern at Oscorp. Later that night, he discovers he has developed spider-like abilities. Studying his father's papers, Peter pays a visit to Dr. Connors, revealing himself to be Richard Parker's son, offering Connors his father's decay rate algorithm, the missing piece in Connors' experiments on regenerating limbs. The doctor is being put under pressure by Oscorp during this time also, as the CEO, Norman Osborne, is dying. Getting a little cocky with his new powers, Pete stands up to Flash, accidentally smashing the basketball glass backboard, forcing his uncle to change shifts at work, asking Peter to walk Aunt May home that night instead. Distracted by his work with Dr. Connors, Peter forgets, arguing with his uncle about it, leaving soon after. Two cents short to buy some milk, Peter gets into a small argument with the cashier of a small shop. A thief raids the store, passing him the milk he wanted to buy as Peter lets him go. Out looking for his nephew, Ben confronts the thief, being shot and killed with Peter finding the body. Wanting revenge, Peter uses his powers to hunt down the criminal. Being invited to Gwen's for dinner, Peter gets into a heated debate with her father, police captain George Stacy, about this new vigilante. Afterwards, Peter reveals his identity to Gwen. After the success with the mouse, Connors is pressured to begin human trials, but refuses, getting fired in the process, with the serum being taken to the Veterans Administration Hospital under the guise of a flu shot. Desperate, Connors tries the serum on himself, waking to find his arm has grown back. Attempting to stop the serum from getting to the hospital, he begins to experience side effects, slowly transforming into a lizard. Peter arrives on the Williamsburg Bridge, webbing up the cars being flipped over the edge and truly understanding the good he can do. Who are you? Spider-Man. Suspecting it may be Kirk Connors, he tracks the lizard to the sewers, battling him just about getting away with his life, with the police starting a manhunt for both of them. The lizard escapes with the plan to release a gas cloud above the city, dispersing the serum, eliminating the weaknesses in which he believes plagues humanity. Trying to catch up to him, Peter is shot down from his web and unmasked by Captain Stacy, who he convinces to let him go, to save his daughter Gwen in Oscorp Tower, waiting on an antidote for the serum. Peter manages to get to Oscorp, dispersing the antidote, restoring Connors to normal, but not before the lizard fatally wounds Captain Stacy. Before his death, Stacy gets Peter to promise to leave Gwen out of this life. Respecting his wishes, Peter avoids Gwen for some time, but not for long. Connors, now in prison, is visited by a shadowy figure, who asks if Peter knows about his father's past. Connors doesn't know, demanding Peter be left alone. Richard Parker, whilst his young son is playing hide and seek, quickly records a message, explaining his disappearance. After leaving Peter with his aunt and uncle, he boards a private plane with his wife, which is hijacked by an assassin as Richard tries to finish an upload of his work and message. During the struggle, the plane crashes, killing everyone inside. Back to present day, two years after the events with the lizard, Peter apprehends criminal Alexei Sitsevich, being late for his graduation. Feeling the guilt of going back on his promise to Gwen's father, Gwen ends their relationship, not able to handle the constant back and forth. 
Meanwhile, old friend of Peter's, Harry Osborne, moves back into the city to visit his father on his deathbed, who reveals the Osborne family curse, a genetic illness that begins at Harry's age. The following day, Norman dies with Harry appointed CEO. Max Dillon, an electrical engineer at Oscorp who was previously saved by Spider-Man idolizing him, falls into a tank of genetically engineered electric eels, causing him to mutate. Trying to maintain a friendship with Gwen, she reveals she may be moving to England as she was offered a place at Oxford University. Waking, Dylan wanders into Times Square, unaware of what's happening. Spider-Man comes to the rescue, but Dylan feels betrayed by his hero, just wanting to be noticed and recognized by others. Harry's illness is starting to show and upon reconnecting with his friend Peter, asks him to get in contact with Spider-Man, who he takes pictures of. Harry wants to use his blood to try and fix what's wrong with him. Peter refuses, unsure what it could do to his friend. Harry is then framed for the cover-up of Dylan's incident and removed from the company, being informed by his assistant Felicia of hidden projects and equipment that could help his condition. Harry gets into Ravencroft, proposing a deal with Dylan, working together to get Harry back inside Oscorp. Finding the spider venom kept from the experiments, injecting himself, accelerating his illness, and mutating him into the Green Goblin. He climbs into a military suit that restores his health, whilst the newly donned Electro lures Spider-Man in for a final fight. Gwen is offered the scholarship and Peter agrees to go to England with her, not before dealing with Electro. Against Peter's wishes, they work together to overload Electro's body, killing him. However, Harry arrives, deducing that it's Peter in the suit. Peter, who said no to helping him. Enacting revenge, he grabs Gwen, taking her to the top of the clock tower. Managing to subdue Harry, Gwen falls. Unable to get to her in time, he fires out a web, but it's too late. Overcome with guilt, Peter neglects his duties as Spider-Man until five months later, whilst Harry is visited in Ravencroft by the Man in Shadows, talking about forming their own team, Alexi is broken out of prison and equipped with a mechanical rhino suit. Seeing this on the news and listening to Gwen's graduation speech for the first time, Peter is inspired once again, confronting the rhino as Spider-Man once more. In 2010, Parker visited the Stark Expo and acquired toy replicas of the Iron Man helmet and glove, as well as Tony Stark's autograph. On his second visit, he stayed his ground when a hammer drone approached him. It was quickly destroyed by Iron Man. Nice work, kid. Six years later, with Steve Rogers on the run with Bucky, intending to stop Zemo from bringing forth an army of Winter Soldiers, Tony Stark forms a team of his own to stop him from getting away. Comprised of half the Avengers, Black Panther, and a new hero on the block, Spider-Man. Tony visits Peter's apartment, flirting with Aunt May and pretending to be there to offer Peter an internship. In reality, he gave him an updated suit and the instruction to stay back and web the others up, before being sent home as Cap escapes. Following the Battle of New York, Adrian Toombs' salvage company are contracted to clear up. However, the operation is taken over by the DODC, in partnership with Tony Stark. Enraged with the loss of business, Toombs convinces his workers to keep the tech already cleaned up, using it to create advanced weaponry to sell, including a flying vulture suit. Many years later, after helping Tony out at the airport in Berlin, Peter returns to normal life, going to school with best friend Ned and crushing on girl Liz. He wants to be doing more to help as Spider-Man, but is told to just stick with the friendly neighborhood stuff. One night, Peter forgets his plans with Ned, crawling in through his window, not realizing his friend was right there, revealing his identity. About to enter a party wearing his suit to prove Peter knows Spider-Man, he sees flashing lights, following Toombs' associates who were out selling weapons to criminal Aaron Davis. He saves Davis before being picked up and dropped into a lake by the vulture. Peter is saved by Stark who warns him away from these types of criminals. Peter and Ned dissect a weapon that was left behind by Vulture's goons, taking out the power source. The thugs come looking for them, with Peter planting a tracker following them to DC as he rejoins the decathlon team. Ned manages to disable the training wheels protocol in Pete's suit, unlocking a bunch of new features and he attempts to stop Tombs from stealing weapons from a DODC truck. 
Finding out the power source is unstable, Peter quickly rushes back to the Washington Monument, saving Ned, Liz, and the decathlon team. Days later, he tried to intercept a dealing Toombs was making aboard the Staten Island Ferry, but a malfunctioning weapon goes off, splitting the ferry in two. Peter does his best to hold it together, but in the end needs Tony's help as Vulture gets away again. Tony, not impressed with Peter going against his wishes to stay away, tells him to give the suit back as he wants Peter to be better than he ever was. Peter returns to normal life, doing well in class, undistracted, and even asks Liz to the homecoming dance. He gets ready and arrives at Liz's house. The person who opens the door, however, is the vulture, Liz's dad. Working out Peter is Spider-Man, Toombs threatens him, giving him one final warning and to forget all this. Peter leaves the dance, donning his old suit and going after Toombs, who's attempting to steal from a DODC plane, transporting gear from Avengers Tower. He steers the falling plane onto a deserted beach, saving Toombs' life from his malfunctioning suit. With her father arrested, Liz moves away, meanwhile Peter turns down an offer to join the Avengers, thinking it was a test. Michelle, otherwise known as MJ, becomes the new decathlon team leader and Tony sends back the suit, in which Peter tries on as Aunt May walks in, seeing him. Locked up, Toombs is approached by Gargan, aka Scorpion, asking for Spider-Man's identity, but Toombs denies any knowledge of this. Two years later, en route to a school field trip, Peter's spider sense alerts him to danger, seeing an alien warship out the window. With Ned distracting everyone, he climbs out the bus and swings away to investigate. He arrives in time to help out Tony Stark. With Doctor Strange captured, Peter climbs onto the warship as it begins to take off. Stark sends out his iron spider suit as Peter begins to struggle to breathe, sending him back down to Earth. Little did Stark know, Peter managed to hold on. Working together, they take over the ship and free Strange, with Peter introducing himself. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using made-up names. With Stark and Strange deciding on confronting Thanos, Peter is officially knighted as an Avenger. They manage to land the ship on Titan, Thanos' home world, but are attacked by the Guardians of the Galaxy, eventually formulating a plan together to take down Thanos. With the Titan arriving with almost all of the Infinity Stones, he is attacked by the team, eventually subdued, with Peter and Tony just about taking the gauntlet holding the stones off, but just then Thanos awakens, taking it from them. Strange makes a deal with him to spare Tony's life in exchange for the time stone he holds. He agrees, leaving to acquire the final stone. Thanos succeeded in his mission, snapping his fingers, decimating half the universe. Terrified, Parker didn't understand what was happening and clutched onto Stark. Stark stayed by Parker's side, but was helpless as Parker muttered one final apology before crumbling into dust. Five years later, with the Avengers that were left succeeding in a time heist, everyone snapped away was brought back, with Strange and Wong collecting together an army to fight Thanos and end this saga, he transported Peter and Co to the destroyed Avengers facility, defeating Thanos at the cost of Tony's life. Peter teared up, telling Tony that he had done it, that they had won, later attending his funeral with his Aunt May. Nick Fury and Maria Hill investigate reports of a sandy Earth-like creature in Mexico, meeting Quentin Beck, claiming to be from another universe, come over to defeat the elementals that threaten theirs. Back in New York, Midtown organise a two-week summer field trip to Europe, and Peter, who is struggling with the death of Tony Stark, plans on using the trip to ask out MJ. Parker and co travel to Venice, but are attacked by the water elemental, with Peter helping Beck to take it down. Fury meets with Peter and gives him Stark's AI glasses, which has access to Stark Industries databases and supplies. With Beck claiming there is but one elemental left, Parker declines Fury's offer to help, returning to his trip. Fury diverts Peter's trip to Prague, forcing him to help out anyway. They manage to destroy the creature together, and Peter gives the glasses to Beck, considering him a good successor to Tony, not himself. However, it turns out Beck isn't a hero at all, but an ex-employee of Stark's, and now, with the glasses, will be able to increase the scale of his illusions, establishing himself as an Avengers level hero. Taking MJ out before they go back home, she reveals she knows he's Spider-Man, as it was pretty obvious. He first denies it, but upon the discovery of a piece of drone debris from the previous battle, outing Beck admits it. 
traveling to Berlin to warn Fury, only to be tricked by Beck, revealing who knows about his secret, being led onto a train track and left for dead. Peter contacts Happy, flying to London to stop Beck. Beck uses Edith to orchestrate a fusion of all the elementals as a cover to kill Parker's friends. Peter's able to disrupt the illusion, regaining control of the glasses, defeating Beck despite his illusions, thanks to his trust in his spider sense. Beck was hit by a drone shot, dying soon after, with one of his associates retrieving data from the drones. Back in New York, Peter and MJ are together, and after dropping her off after a swing around the city, is distracted by a broadcast from the Daily Bugle, where J. Jonah Jameson reveals Peter to be the Spider-Man and shows doctored footage of the London incident, whereby Beck frames Peter for the drone attack and his subsequent death. Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. 